You guys need to see this. My dreams of creating an ultimate termite army are becoming a reality. Several months ago, a random termite nuptial flight happened at a cottage I was staying at. And I managed to capture a ton of paired termite kings and queens who had just gotten married, so to speak. These wedded kings and queens had just one mission, to start a massive termite kingdom of their own underground. Now I placed these wedded termite pairs into test tubes where they went on to lay eggs. And these eggs later hatched to produce tiny termite worker babies. The little white workers eventually grew into these awesome larger workers with brown heads. But guys, this week I peeked at the termite colony's test tubes and was just thrilled by what I saw. This is a continuation of and update video on our growing termite armies, which will surely blow you away. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. We've made it AC family. I can just feel it that in our future, we shall have a massive termite colony with a huge pulsating queen pumping out those eggs and active foraging termite trails like this, all within an epic terrarium setup soon to come. This is the dream and we've gotten one more step closer to it. Have a look. I am happy to announce that our termite colonies have officially started to produce soldiers. See it right there? A worker with a massive head and elongated sharp jaws. These highly valuable workers are specialized in colony defense and can mean the difference between whether a termite colony survives or dies during an attack. Now I have finally been able to chat extensively with a termite expert about our termites here because up until recently there was so much about these termites that remained a mystery to me. Like how they ate. Because these termites are a fungus growing type of termite. But they don't eat just any fungus. They feed on a special species of fungus that the colony grows in their underground chambers. I initially was like, okay, so where do I get this termite fungus? Aside from that, I didn't even know the exact species of our termites. But guys, after my chat with my new termite hobbyist friend, I now know a ton about these starting termite armies of ours. And I can't wait to share with you what I know in this video. But guys, I'll be needing your help. We're approaching the next phase in their care. And so after I share with you everything I know about these termites, I'll be asking you a very important question and will be needing your opinions on a certain decision I need to make regarding these termites. So stay tuned until the end for that coming up. So back to the soldiers. Aren't they just crazy? This termite colony here is the largest of the bunch that I have and the first to create these soldiers. There's another huge soldier somewhere in here, which you will see later. So this test tube colony here, as you can see, has all the different termite casts. There are two termite royals, the king and queen, still unsure who is who. There is a healthy batch of eggs. There are little white newborns, ordinary workers with brown heads, and now the newly arrived massive soldiers. If you look down there, you'll see the second termite soldier. That one is even larger than the first one we saw. I wonder how many of these workers will actually continue to evolve into these impressive soldiers. And something tells me the colony will produce even bigger ones than these once they start their fungus gardens going. Speaking of which guys, in case you're wondering what they've been eating thus far, turns out the king and queen have been feeding them their own liquefied food supply drawn from stores from their own body tissues. Kind of like how queen ants feed their first larvae liquefied muscle tissues from their thorax. Turns out termite kings and queens have a similar mode of first generation worker feeding. And the workers seem to be doing quite well so far, feeding from what essentially is their parents barfed up liquefied body tissues. But it does look like the king and queen termites are slowly starting to deplete these food stores. Their bodies have shrunken considerably. And needless to say, the self-made termite food isn't an unlimited supply. These termites will need to start growing and eating their termite fungus gardens soon. So here's what I've learned about that, and it has to do with our next step in the care of our termites. Listen to this. 
So my new termite hobbyist friend, who goes by the name of Sakata Fun, who has been so helpful at guiding me to raise these termites into the massive armies I hope they'll become one day, says that our termites are the species Macrotermes gilvis. And lucky for us, the species is extensively studied. Here's what we know about them. Once the termite colonies reach a certain size, they break out of their birth chamber and forage for decaying leaves and twigs, which contain the necessary spores to grow their essential termite fungus. But where do these spores come from? Well, they come from mushrooms which sprout from other Macrotermes gilvis mounds. So what I need to do then is essentially collect decaying leaves and twigs from around a termite mound, hopefully a Macrotermes gilvis termite mound, and give it to the termites once they are ready to forage. The decaying leaves and twigs will contain the spores the termites need to get their fungus garden started. Then the colony can grow their fungus garden, like the little farmers these termites naturally are, and eat from this constantly growing fungus. The termites will also need to go out in periodic foraging raids to collect decaying leaves and twigs that will continue to feed this termite fungus. However, there are two problems I have now. Listen to this. First, I have several termite mounds in my yard, and hopefully they are Macrotermes gilvis, but I'm not 100% sure. It will have to be a gamble, and hopefully all the detritus I collect contain the termite fungus spores our termites need. Cicada fun feels like the termite mounds in my yard possibly are, but I'll have to keep checking the mounds at night to see if they form the typical Macrotermes gilvis foraging trails, and if the workers indeed look like Macrotermes gilvis. But more importantly, the second problem I have is that according to Sakata Fun, these test tubes are unsuitable environments for the growing of their starting fungus comb. Though they seem to be perfect environments for the colony at this stage, there simply isn't enough space for them to properly grow the fungus garden. Sakata Fun says we need to move the termites into a larger setup where the fungus can flourish properly. So AC family, here's where I need your opinions. Please watch and listen to the options I have come up with. First, this here is a petri dish. I've seen termite colonies housed in petri dish setups before. Plus, it's a great way to house the colonies while still being able to see them. I've attached an AC test tube adapter from AntsCanada.com where I intend on attaching the test tubed colony when ready. The purpose of the petri dish is to offer a new space for the termites to move into. I'll have to line it along the sides and bottom with heavily clayed soil with as little organic matter as possible so it doesn't mold because once the termites start bringing in the decayed leaves and twigs containing the spores, the termites will be doing their thing, breaking down the detritus and mixing their poop into the mix and forming a fungus comb which will grow the fungus. But the soil used needs to be low in organic content to keep the entire fungus comb from falling victim to outside mold. The termites know how to control the nest environment to grow their termite fungus, but the soil needs to be correct to ensure success. The petri dish apparently also needs to be perfectly sealed because the termites use the trapped carbon dioxide to keep other molds from growing. Pretty fascinating stuff. This entire petri dish also has a second hole which the termites can burrow out of and I can place this whole petri dish set up into a larger terrarium where I can lay out all the decayed leaves and twigs I collect for the termites to take back home and use for their fungus comb. Now our second option is to go big. This container, a cookie jar, which can seal up completely. I can attach a test tube adapter here and also fill it up with some clay soil and hopefully the termites could move in. My hopes is they treat this entire space as one large underground chamber and not choose to conceal themselves in the clay soil. There is no way to tell what the termites would do. In a petri dish, there isn't a lot of space for the termites to hide, but if they did choose to make this whole container one massive chamber, that would be amazing for filming. I can then place another hole connected to a tube which can lead to an outworld where I can place the fungus spore laden leaves and twigs for which the termites can forage. So what do you guys think? Which of these two options should we attempt? It seems the first step would be to get our termites to move into a more suitable nest chamber and then provide the leaves and twigs, but I'm unsure which setup to try. I do have several of these starting termite colonies 
So if what we decide fails, we'll at least have more chances to attempt different setups. Let me know in the comments which you think we should try. I don't think the termites are at the stage where they need to forage just yet, but they will need to do it soon. The termite colony I tried burying into soil ended up dying sadly, so I think ensuring the termites have the most ideal environment conducive to the success of their fungus combs will determine whether or not our termites are able to make it to the massive armies we hope they will become. But I'm certain with your help guys, we'll get there. I feel it's important we try to grow a termite colony, because the more we learn about them, the better, seeing as like ants, termites are one of those insects that have received such a bad rap. These termites are not home destroyers. They don't want the wood in your house. They just want decaying material to grow their fungus. They're super important to the ecosystem and truly fascinating creatures if you take a closer look at their secret lives in the soil. I look forward to helping these little guys start up their fungus combs. We just need to figure out the best way to help them do so. Crossing fingers, and I'll keep you all updated on their exciting progress. Thank you for watching and supporting the ants and termites. It's ant and termite love forever.